Hey there, Fletch Mall Things Overlanding here, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about this new 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery that I got from a company called Batra. I'm going to kind of walk you through my power consumption needs and how my needs have changed over the last five, six, seven years of doing overlanding and, and, and long distance camping. I'm going to talk a little bit about my solar setup, and I'm going to talk about why I'm switching to this Batra 200 amp hour heated built-in BMS uh, Bluetooth battery. So if you want to learn more about this, if you're looking for a really good budget option for a ton of capacity, 200 amp hours of power, this might be a good option for you. And again, I'm going to walk you through all the features and why I'm switching to this battery in this video. So stay tuned for more on the Vatro 200 amp hour heated LifePo 4 battery. So with the 200 amp hour battery that I have now, it's not heated. And last winter, I kind of ran into the problems going camping a lot in the winter where, you know, I couldn't get the battery to charge, basically. It, it was too cold. It would never get to temp, especially because in my situation, it's in the back of the truck it's not gonna get warm like it would if it was in the cab of the truck. So that being said, uh, for me, it made sense to go ahead and upgrade and get a heated uh, 200 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. So that's basically the change. So again, now let's talk about dimensions. We've already established that it is a big battery. So the dimensions are that it is about 8.58 inches thick. It is about 20 and a half inches long. And then it is about 9.4 inches tall. As far as actually connecting power, this is what I love about having like a dedicated house battery like this. There are basically some screw in posts for positive and negative. So because it's essentially just a battery, like your starter battery in your vehicle, but this one is, you know, has the chemical makeup of LifePo 4, which makes it so that you can use basically about 95% or 190 amp hours of this, it's significantly more efficient than say an AGM counterpart battery. It's also about a third of the weight of a comparable AGM battery. So if you had a 200 amp hour AGM battery, you could only use about 60% of that. So you could only use about 120 amp hours of the 200 that you have available. And it's gonna weigh about three times more than this battery, which is you know, another huge advantage of LifePo 4 over AGM. But the nice thing about these, uh, you know, just basically being a sort of like a house battery or like a, a starter style battery is that because you've just got these positive and negatives, you can hook it up to basically any sort of control system that you want. And there are a number of them out there. And I'll show you mine. So I use a Red Arc system for my uh, power needs. And basically you just tell it, you know, hey, this is a 200 amp hour battery. And then once you've told it that, then it will know what to charge that thing to. And it can monitor things like solar input or, you know, shore power. Or if you've got it hooked up to your alternator, it can show you how much power you're generating from your alternator. And it will basically keep that battery topped off for you. Now, again, there are a number of options. You don't have to go with Red Arc. It is really expensive. Um, but I'll put some links to some of the options in the in the description down below. I think Kickass has one. Uh, Renogy has one. There's just a number of options. I think even Garmin has one now. So there are a ton of options for how to control this thing and keep it topped off. But if you have a controller plus the battery and some way to sort of input power into it, again, whether it's shore power, whether it is solar power, which is my option, I'm literally only using solar right now to charge my 200 amp hour battery up and it pretty much keeps it topped off all the time. So once you've hooked this up to some sort of controller, then you've got all that capacity that you can use to then power things off of your controller. So in my case, I've got things like my refrigerator hooked up to it. I've got this strobe light bar hooked up to it here that I can hit a button in my cab on my Red Arc controller, and then that will turn that on, pulling power from my house battery, which will be this here when I switch it out. You can do all kinds of things like auxiliary lights. You, I have lights in my bed that will light up all around sort of the back of my truck when I'm camping. So there's just a number of ways you can do that. You could run things like a diesel here. You could run things like, you know, a refrigerator, like I mentioned. There's just a ton of ways to use this power for different options for camping. So now that we've talked about the dimensions and kind of how you would hook this up, the basics of how something like this type of battery would work in a camping or overlanding setup, let's talk a little bit more about features and things like that. So basically the nice thing about this and the, the main reason that I switched to this battery is this low temp cutoff protection self-heating. So basically because of that self-heating protection, when it gets down to like single digits and it's too cold to charge, typically you want your battery to be about 41 degrees or more to charge it to avoid damaging the LiPo 4 cells. So what this battery will actually do is it will use its own contained power. 
and you may be asking, well, if I can't charge it, how would it discharge, right? The power, once it's in there, you can use it no matter how cold it is. So for example, on my old battery, I could use all my stuff. My fridge would run, I could run my diesel heater off of the old battery, even when it's, you know, 10 degrees out, five degrees out, negative 10 degrees out. I could run my strobe lights, everything would work, but you would just see that battery power going down, right? It would just continue to discharge. And what would happen is the Red Arc would say, hey, it's too cold to charge this safely, so I'm not gonna charge it. So then on some winter trips, three, four, five day trips, I would find that I am basically like, as I run my diesel heater at night, as I'm running strobes, say on trails during the day, as I've got my fridge running, which doesn't run a ton in the winter, but it takes some power just to kind of keep it on, um, the, the battery would drop to 70 and then 60 and then 50%. So what this is going to basically do is when it starts to get down in those cold temps, it's going to use the power within this battery to activate some heating cells that are contained inside this box. And that's going to heat the battery back up to a safe temperature. When it gets to 41 degrees, that self heating is going to turn off. And then it's going to start to take power from the solar from my red arc like normal. So basically it allows you to heat the battery up so that when it gets cold and you normally wouldn't be able to charge it, it will heat itself up automatically until it reaches a temp where your then solar or alternator or shore power could take over and recharge the battery. So again, that for me is the big game changer and that is kind of why I'm switching to this battery is the self-heating function. So if you're not familiar with LifePo4, uh, one thing that's really nice about it, especially compared to AGM, is that it has a much longer cycle life. So typically on like a lead acid battery, an AGM type battery, you get about three to 500 cycles uh, before that battery is gonna be shot. Basically, as you discharge it and recharge it, it's gonna wear out the cells inside of that battery in 300 to 500 uses or charges and discharges. With a LiPo 4, you get 5,000 plus cycles. So the nice thing is, again, this from a longevity standpoint for the, you know, just a little bit more than AGM batteries, but for the significant weight savings, you're gonna get significantly more use out of this. I anticipate using this for probably the next six to 10 years, just kind of depending on how much I use it. Uh, another nice thing about the Vatra is that it does come with a five-year warranty, which I really like. So if anything ever happens to the battery, you can reach out to Vatra and within five years, they will take care of you and do something to help you out in the event that something were to go wrong with it or would stop working. Another nice thing about LifePo 4 versus AGM is that it charges faster. So because of the chemistry of the, the battery makeup, it's gonna charge f up to five times faster than traditional AGM style batteries. So again, when it's cold out especially, I wanna be able to take as much power from my solar panels as I can and use that to charge this thing up, you know? Uh, while I can, while I've got solar and stuff. I don't want to be sitting there all day and waiting two days to charge it up. One last thing that I do want to cover with you, and I'll kind of throw it up on the screen here, is that they do have an app for it. And I, again, I'm going to share my screen from the phone here with you, but the nice thing about it is it's totally Bluetooth. So essentially what you do is when you turn on the app, it's got three little tabs at the bottom here, Bluetooth, dashboard, and about. It's going to start on the Bluetooth thing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see your battery pop up there and you're going to hit on. You're going to toggle on the Bluetooth. That's going to connect to the battery and say, hey, talk to me, right? Then you're going to hit the dashboard button at the bottom, and that's going to show you some things. It's going to show you what the capacity is at. So again, if you didn't really have a controller, let's say that you didn't want to do anything with like a Red Arc or a Renogy controller or anything like that. You just literally wanted a battery like this in your vehicle that you could discharge for a while and then maybe hook up alligator clips to with like a 12 volt plug at home or something like that. You could do that and you could use the BMS from the controller to basically kind of keep tabs on your battery and then just charge it back up when you get home. You could just use this as a one time, sort of almost like a power bank, take it with you, run your stuff off of it, and then come back and do that. I've never done that. I don't think that's very common, but I'm just saying you could. If you had like a, a battery box or something, you just wanted to take it out, use it for a weekend and then bring it home and hook it up to something to plug it in and charge it, you could do that. Um, but it's just got a ton of things. It'll show you what the total voltage is. It will show you what current's being drawn if you have things connected to it. It'll tell you the temperature of it. It'll tell you the condition of the different cells. So there's four different cells in this battery and it will tell you what each are at from a voltage standpoint. So it does give you a, a good amount of information about the battery. Again, I'm gonna use my Red Arc for the most part to control the battery and keep it charged up and everything. But it is just kind of nice that you can see this kind of information if you wanted to on the battery. You could also use this to verify that your control system is accurate, right? Because it's kind of guesstimating a little bit because you tell it it's a 200 amp hour battery and then it has to determine charge from what it sees going in and out. Uh, this would be just a good backup to kind of be able to check and double check your control system to make sure that it's accurate and that you're not discharging your battery too much, for example. All right, guys, so that will do it for the Botra 200 amp hour LiPo 4 built-in BMS heated battery. Uh, I hope that that was helpful for you. I hope that seeing kind of my setup and, and where my mind's been going with all this and why I'm switching to this uh, helps you if you're, again, thinking through your power needs and what you kind of want. 
But if you're going on several three, four day trips, especially in the winter and stuff, which I'm in the Midwest, it gets cold here and we go up into Michigan and Wisconsin in January and February and it's down in the double digits negative. Uh, having something with built in heat is really, really nice to just make sure that you're going to be able to charge the battery, that you're not going to be left without power in those cold temps. Um, not to mention the nice features of the built in Bluetooth um, and just the capacity. 200 amp hours is really, really nice. And for the money, especially, I paid almost this much for a 100 amp hour battery five years ago. So the cost on these things has come way down. Not to mention the weight savings over like a traditional AGM too. That I talked about a little bit in the video, but that is a huge benefit to a battery like this that's LifePo 4 as well. So again, I hope that that was helpful for you. If it was, click that like button. Uh, if you have any questions, post up in the comments down below. Uh, as I mentioned, there is going to be a link to this battery in the description down below. I'll also put a link to my solar panels. I'll put a link to you know some of the other stuff that I talked about in the video. So if you're looking for quick, easy access to find those things, definitely check the description down below for those links. Also in the description down below will be links to all my social channels. So wherever you want to come hang out, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, I mean, I'm everywhere. So wherever you want to come hang out, I'd love to have you guys in the conversation over there. There's also a join button below this video, which is just sort of a passive way to support the channel. It's about seven bucks a month, so no pressure whatsoever. But if you want early access to the video, plus a few other perks, and again, just a passive way to sort of say, hey, thanks for the content, that's a good way to do it. Now, if you're looking for a more active way to support the channel, there's also a link to my Patreon group down there. We've got a 24 seven Discord where we all kind of chat about our rigs and our gear and that sort of thing. We also do a once a month Zoom call and then we do a couple of trips per year. So it's a ton of fun. If you want to be more actively involved, that's a good way to do it. Also in the description down below is a link to my website where I've got funny overlanding camping theme patches and stickers. So if you're into any of that stuff, things like don't burn your wiener and it's a hot dog, definitely check that out as well. And then last but not least, there is also a link to my Newbie Overlanders Facebook group. Totally free to join. Tons of awesome members in that group. So if you're newer to overlanding and looking for a place to learn and ask questions without being bullied, that's a good spot. Or if you've been doing this for a while and you're just kind of tired of the big groups because they're just awash with bullying and, and judgment and gatekeeping, uh, then that may be a good group for you. Check that out as well. Um, but again, thanks so much for watching. Hope that was helpful. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.